What's up everyone, Tech Me Out here. Today I'm gonna be doing a video on something that I've gotten a lot of questions about and a lot of patience from all of you that I appreciate. And that is my video from my top 10 Android apps. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right on in. So to kick things off, my lock screen here is compliments of C Launcher. So with this launcher, you get an iPhone-like lock screen. Um, pretty much you can slide to unlock just like an iPhone. You also get the camera down here where you can slide up and jump quickly into your camera just as if you were on an iPhone. So of course my home screen is a part of C Launcher as well. Some things that I like about it is that you can choose from themes for your home screen. It also groups your icons for you in folders. So all of those folders right there, I did not make. C Launcher figured out which items should be in them and group them accordingly based upon the category or type of app it was. Also, when you press on the settings icon, it takes you first to some quick toggles. So you can turn certain things on and off. However, if you want to get to your actual settings, you can just tap on the settings icon down here. Another thing I like about C Launcher is that you can search for applications. So you don't have to manually find them. You can just use this search function here to type in the application name and figure out where it is on your phone. The only thing that I didn't like is that you could not customize your columns and rows because I would love to make my icon smaller here by doing so. So that's just one setback. So for the first app I want to introduce you all to is Power Button. Power Button is an application for all of you that quickly want to be able to turn your flashlight on and off. So with your Power Button, you can do so. So in looking here, I can press my Power Button three times. And once I do, my phone will vibrate and also my flashlight will turn on. The only thing is with the free version is that you have to slide to unlock go into the application and then turn the flashlight off. So it's not as simple to turn the light off unless you want to pay the 99 cents to get the full version to have that feature. But if you are the type that would love to have the option to hit your power button and turn it off or on, this will be an application for you. Coming in at number two, we have morning routine. So morning routine is for all of you that have a hard time getting up because what it will require you to do could definitely get you up and going. So you have the option when you make an alarm to choose one of three things. You can make a regular alarm where you swipe to turn off the alarm, or you can make it so that you have to scan a barcode to turn off the alarm. So it sounds crazy, but imagine you have trouble getting up. You can make it so that you have to scan the barcode of your shower gel and maybe your shampoo in order to turn the alarm off. Or if you're really hard to wake up, you might like the sequence idea where you have to perform a sequence of events before the alarm actually gets turned off. Not only do you have these vast options in terms of making sure you get up and at them, but you also have a beautiful interface to do the alarms with. So morning routine is definitely an application worth checking out. Coming in next, we have pictures. Pictures is a gallery viewer. So you basically have gestures to view your photos. So I'm able to swipe in from the left and take a look at all of my albums. Or I can swipe in from the right over here and take a look at all of the locations that my photos were taken at. However, I don't geotag anything, but if you are the type that does, you can view your photos based upon where they were taken at. The main reason though that I really like it is just because of the interface. It gives you a gorgeous design to take a look at your photos with. So definitely check it out. Next up, we have Tiny Apps. And what Tiny Apps does is it gives you a smaller version of the application you want to use. So you're able to interact with it just the same you can also resize the window to be whatever size you want it to be. And then you can click up here where the title of it is and drag it over here to the left hand side. And it will minimize it into a smaller application. And then when you want it again, you can just tap on it and it'll open it up. But the neat thing about it is, is that it stays over there. So you can do whatever else you need to on your phone and still have that little minimized version of your app that you need. Or you can just click and drag it back out here in the middle to open it up, hit the X and get rid of it all together. Coming in next, we have next song. Now, as you can see at the top, I have a banner notification of what song is currently playing. And that's compliments of next song. So in a scenario when you're not in your music app and you're somewhere else on your phone, you don't have to jump back into the music app to figure out what song just played. It's pretty cool. You can customize a few things about it from within the settings of the app itself. Next up, we have Yo Window Weather. And Yo Window Weather is pretty neat because it gives you animations and additions to sounds. So I'm able to use this slider here to kind of slide back and forth to view what the weather will be like in that location at that particular moment in time. Now, in reference to the sounds that play, you might be able to hear them a little bit in the background but it's kind of giving you like the sounds of what that area would be. So for New York City, it's kind of like traffic and stuff. But you can choose other locations up here in the top left. So let's try Tokyo. And I'm able to see what time it is in Tokyo as well as what the weather is in Tokyo. And I can use this slider 
to see what it'll be later on in the day. Next up, we have Quick Click. And Quick Click is going to allow you to use your volume buttons to perform a certain action. So for instance, I have mine set so that if I press the volume button up four times, it'll let me compose a message to a specific person. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. I then felt my phone vibrate and I have it set so that it'll allow me to send a text message to the allergy clinic. But you have a whole bunch of other actions that you can do and it would just all be based upon the series of the way you press your volume button. So you can go up, down, up, down, and it'll be something and so forth and so on. So definitely check it out if you kind of want another quick way to do things. Speaking of a quick way to do things, you can also download Lazy Swipe to have a quick action by just lazily swiping from the corner of your screen. And it'll pull up this little menu here where you can have your recent apps, your favorite apps, and a toolbox, which is basically some on and off toggles of things that you might quickly need to turn on or off. And this little action is done from either corner, the left bottom corner or the right bottom corner. You can slide up from either one real lazy like and pull up all of this. That's lazy swipe. So the last two things I want to share with you are not more so apps, but games. For the first game, I have Jelly Jump. And it's a very, very simple game, but still yet difficult. So it's definitely worth checking out. So with Jelly Jump, all you're literally doing is just tapping your screen. You're going to try to get this jelly block to land above these little obstacles. So let's take a look. So I'm going to tap my screen and I'm going to try to get him to jump above that obstacle there. And it looks easy, but it's really hard because you got to time it just right. My best score is 10. Maybe you can beat me, but you're just going to keep tapping. And then if he gets stuck a little bit, Parts of him get shed it off, or he may not even make it at all. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Oh, I didn't make it at all. That. Okay, never mind. We're just gonna move on to the next game. Coming in last, but definitely not least, is Magic Touch. So Magic Touch has these little balloons on these little robots, and you're gonna draw what's on the balloon. And when you draw what's on the balloon, the little robot guy comes crashing down. And it looks easy and it starts off easy, but then out of nowhere, they start giving you these really complicated drawings to do. So let me try this one. Oh, this, it's a lot. Okay. Oh, this one gets me. There we go. Doing kind of good. Let's see how far I'll make it though. So as you can see, I made it up to 38. I got really into the game and it got really quiet. So I just kind of cut the recording. But nonetheless, as you can see, my high score was a 38. I was focused. If you find that you beat my score in either of these games, screenshot it to me on Twitter or check me out. So my question for all of you to leave down below in the comments section is, what are your current top three favorite applications on your Android device? Drop it down below and who knows, maybe I'll review one of them. But that does sum everything up. If you liked this video, you already know what to do. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.